Welcome to Hyperlog Index Zero. This is the series where I share the business and development process of taking a startup called Hyperfan and turning it into a billion dollar startup that is going to the moon. It's been five weeks since I've posted my last YouTube video, which officially makes this the longest amount of time I've gone without posting a video, and it's for very good reason. I've been very busy wasting my time on dumb activities, slowly getting closer and closer to death, indulging on the whims of other people, but also I've been heads down coding the entire startup, which I'm excited to finally be able to share with you. I usually like to finish the first version of any project I'm building in under a month, but with this startup, I started on June 4th, and by August 4th, I had a stolen logo, two app screens, and a name that just kind of sounded weird. I'm sure I could blame some of these things on bad designers and other people, but at the end of the day, I supervised and okayed all these things. So on August 5th, I decided not to release another YouTube video until I got all my ducks in a row and cranked out the quality of app that I knew I could crank out. Let's start with the rebrand. Astral is officially dead. The problem with it is whenever I said it, half the people had no idea what I was saying. Some people thought it had to do with astrology. The domain name was just unattainable. And most importantly, the name just didn't vibe with me. I wanted something a little less corporate, more fun, and something with a little bit more unicorn energy. So I'd like to introduce you to the new brand, Hyperfan. With a never before seen logo, which I promise was not drawn by my seven-year-old nephew. Fun fact, the logo has a gradient on it because my co-founder's first love is asparagus and his second is Instagram. Another thing that makes this name great is I was able to sell my left kidney to obtain the domain hyperfan.com, which is gonna be a huge asset and hopefully sell for three kidneys in the future. The idea for the startup itself hasn't changed. We're still doing gamification where fans compete in a contest to get into a community with their favorite content creator. But before I actually coded out the whole contest part, I wanted to make sure the community was really solid and was worth competing to get into. So what I'm gonna be showing you today is our take on what a private community should look like. Let's jump into the beginning of the app where you authenticate using your phone number instead of a password because it's faster, but more importantly, it cuts down on the number of fake accounts people can create. A six digit code will be sent to the number you entered using a service called Twilio, where I pay close to one cent per text message. You have one minute to enter the code before it expires. This is to prevent people from just mashing in different numbers and just brute forcing to guess the login code. After logging in, you'll see the chronological feed, which is the main pillar of the community that both fans and the creator can create posts for. This might seem standard, but this is one of the things that fundamentally differentiates Hyperfan from OnlyFans and Patreon. Allowing fans to also post in the feed prevents it from drying up, which commonly happens on Patreon where the entire responsibility falls on the creator. And it also creates a real community where fans can bring up topics for discussion and truly interact slash make friends with the other members. Back to the app, on the second tab, we have a giant group chat, which includes everyone in the community. Whether we split this up into channels is still to be determined. Reactions are most likely happening and direct messages are definitely coming. The middle tab is for creating posts and the third tab is for notifications where you get alerted if someone interacts with your post or comment. Tapping on the alert takes you to where the event occurred. Storing notifications in your database is always interesting because you can just have a bunch of different kinds. So far, there's six different types of notifications, which I decided to pack all into a single table with a bunch of optional columns. And yeah, by the way, this is a Prisma schema. And when I query this data, I just do a bunch of left joins to get all the relationships and uh, we'll see if this works well. The comment section has one level of nesting. So there's top level comments and then replies. If you decide to respond to a comment one level deep, it will have a little section showing who you responded to, but it doesn't nest underneath to avoid things getting too complex, which is inspired by another app that will be left unnamed for legal reasons. The last tab in the app brings up a drawer for you to either go to settings or view your own profile, which has some info about yourself on the top and then a list of posts you've made at the bottom. I coded the entire thing using the Hypebeast stack, aka React Native slash Expo for the app, Node.js for the server, PostgreSQL for the database, 
and of course TypeScript for the programming language. I'm using WebSockets for the live chat and I was like, heck, if I have to establish a WebSocket connection, I might as well just send all my data through that. So I'm sending GraphQL requests through my WebSocket. All the images are stored on S3 and Amazon's cloud and I'm mixing it up for the backend. The entire thing is hosted on Heroku. I usually like to stick Node.js and PostgreSQL in a VPS because it's cost effective, but for this particular project with the amount of money that's about to be flowing in it, it just didn't make sense for me to be doing DevOps when we could outsource it to Heroku for pennies on the Bitcoin. And by the way, we're probably going to be switching Heroku to like Elastic Beanstalk to use AWS credits anyway. The app is live on both the Apple and Google Play Store, but instead of opening it up to the public, we decided to make it invite only. We did this to add artificial hype to demonstrate we have some sort of traction before we complete the polished app. And most importantly, to make sure people can slowly try the app without being stampeded by a herd of users. So I spent the last week working on a landing page for you to get an invite. And wow, I forgot how agonizing it is to make one of these. The coding part's not that bad, but I spent way too much time iterating on the copy and design with my co-founder until we got something. And I don't even know if we have something, but either way, it's live at hyperfan.com if you want to check it out. And I look forward to reading your comments on how it renders kind of funny on your Opera G73456 T- browser. That's it for this hyperlog. Next steps are a haircut, more coding, onboarding our first creator community, merch for Hyperfan and also Benawad. And lastly, I'm going to be going to LA next week to mingle with creators and do some biz dev. So if you'd like to meet up while I'm there, shoot me an email at ben at hyperfan.com.